It's a raccoon with a talk show slinging culture facts you might not know from the biggest flops to the greatest hits. This is Trash Can Tidbits. Hello, everyone. I'm beaten, and as you can see, I'm looking a little bit different this week. My fursuit head is currently having some minor repairs, so this week on Trash Can Tidbits, I'm trying something new by using some of these emote stickers. If you want to check out the artist, they're Mini Borker Arts on Telegram or 450 Angel Dragons on Fur Affinity. Seriously, go check them out and commission them. They really need the money. Now, last week I asked the question, which 15th century historical ruler served as the inspiration for Count Dracula? Now, this is a no-brainer here. The answer is Vlad the Impaler. Vlad III, or Vlad Tipis, was a Romanian king who ruled over the Wallachian region of Romania a total of three times between 1448 and his death in 1476. He was known as Vlad the Impaler for the gruesome way he executed his enemies. But there's going to be no gore in this series. Bram Stoker eventually came across the account of Vlad the Impaler while outlining the plot of his novel and infused the main villain with the ruler's bloodlust and his family name, Dracul, and boom! there was Dracula. Now with that addressed, let's get started with fact number one. Did you know that Wizard of Oz author L. Frank Baum got the name for Oz from his filing cabinet? The idea for the stories came to him early on from telling the stories to his children and their friends. One of them asked what the name of the magic land was. Baum got the idea by looking at his filing cabinet. The first drawer was labeled A to N and the second was labeled O to Z. The rest, as they say, is history. Fact 2. Did you know that Julie Andrews was never considered to play Eliza Doolittle in the movie version of My Fair Lady? As we all know, Walt Disney took a chance on her for Mary Poppins after seeing her in the Broadway musical Camelot, and the part made her a star, and won the Golden Globe and the Oscar for Best Actress. During her Golden Globe acceptance speech, as a joke, she thanked My Fair Lady producer Jack Warner for making all this possible, which caused the whole room and Warner himself to burst out laughing. Andrews would also have the last laugh on Jack Warner when the company decided not to cast her in the film version of Camelot. That film would bomb so badly that Warner was fired from the studio. Fact 3. Did you know that Simba from The Lion King was based on a famous rock star? Simba's primary animator, Ruben Aquino, did model some of Simba's facial features on that of his voice actor, Matthew Broderick, but it's also been stated that his mane was based on that of John Bon Jovi. I'm a huge Bon Jovi fan, and looking at Simba now, I can definitely see the resemblance. You know, based on that revelation, I want to see what Simba would look like belting out a Bon Jovi song like Living on a Prayer or Always, for research purposes. <laughs> Fact 4. Did you know that contrary to popular belief, not all of Audrey Hepburn's singing in My Fair Lady was dubbed over? While it is true that her voice wasn't up to snuff on the more vocally demanding songs like I Could Have Danced All Night, she did, however, do nearly all of only one song. The song Just You Wait was sung in a very reasonable lower register for her, as was the beginning of the aforementioned I Could Have Danced All Night. Hepburn's voice double, Marnie Nixon, did everything else. Nixon also famously provided the singing for two other Hollywood legends, Natalie Wood in West Side Story and Deborah Carr in The King and I. Fact 5. Did you know that various references to earlier Naughty Dog games pop up in other franchises by the studio? For example, in the first chapter of Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the character's wetsuits have the word Otzel on it a reference to Daxter from the Jack and Daxter games. Jack and Daxter themselves can also be found as plush toys in one area of The Last of Us. Also, a precursor orb can be found in each of the Uncharted games, a mysterious artifact. Fact 6. Did you know that British actor Julian Glover's wife appears as his character's wife in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Glover has had an extraordinary career, appearing as a villain in the James Bond, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones franchises, as well as more recently as Grand Maester Pycelle on Game of Thrones. 
In Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he plays main villain Walter Donovan, an American antiquities collector who is secretly a Nazi. His real wife, Isla Blair, appears in the film as Donovan's wife and also has one line. Walter, you're neglecting your guests. Fact 7. Did you know that the role of Little Red Riding Hood in the movie version of the musical Into the Woods was recast with a slightly older actress? On the stage, the part of Red Riding Hood is usually cast with an adult actress playing a child, but for the movie, they decided to use a real child, and for some reason, they settled on Sophia Grace Brownlee, one half of the YouTube act Sophia Grace and Rosie. Brownlee became an internet sensation with her appearances on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. However, it was soon met with controversy because she was just too young for the part, especially for the Wolf's song, Hello Little Girl, which on the stage is sung with some lyrics alluding to pedophilia. The song's arrangement was adjusted just a bit to avoid those references, and Sophia Grace was replaced with a more experienced child actress, Lilla Crawford, who appeared in the Broadway revival of Annie. James Lapine, who directed that revival, also wrote the screenplay and the original book for Into the Woods, so it was only natural that he'd have some say in the matter. Fact 8. Did you know that The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons for the Game Boy was originally supposed to be a trilogy? The third game was going to be called The Legend of Zelda Mystical Seed of Courage. This would have made sense because the three titles would have echoed the three pieces of the Triforce, which is an important symbol in the franchise. The games would have linked together with the password system. The feature and the third game was ultimately abandoned when there were problems integrating the password system together for all three games. Fact 9. Did you know that Spike Lee's remake of the Korean classic Old Boy was one of Lee's first studio films? As is often the case with studio films, sometimes the final cut gets taken out of the filmmaker's control, and this happened with Spike. The studio therefore cut his version from 140 minutes, losing major character development, down to 104 minutes, and he ended up disowning the film. Hence, instead of the opening title card reading, A Spike Lee Joint, it instead says, A Spike Lee Film indicating you're not really seeing something that Spike Lee himself had any input or, or receiving final cut from. It's a shame. Fact 10. Did you know that the four vultures in the Jungle Book were not only based on the Beatles, but Walt Disney even tried to get them to play them in the movie? Unfortunately, John Lennon wasn't receptive of the idea, so Disney had the animators redesign the vultures as an homage to the Beatles rather than copying the band's look 100% even though one of them could be pretty much based on George Harrison. Also, their song, That's What Friends Are For, was rewritten from a rock song to a barbershop quartet because the 60s rock sound was, in Disney's words, dated. In the end, I think it worked well because it eventually matched the fun and jazzy tone of the overall film. And here's this week's trivia question. The animated movie Cats Don't Dance is a really underrated movie that also pokes fun at older Hollywood. There are many references to classic movies and actors from it, even with the main villain, the evil and bratty child star, Darla Dimple. You may know that she is a parody of child star Shirley Temple, but she also takes her name from another child star of the 30s. My question to you is, in addition to Shirley Temple, which other 1930s child star was Darla Dimple based on? And there we go for this week. Thanks again to Mini Borger Arts for these emote stickers. I really like them. Hopefully, you enjoyed me mixing things up a little bit while my head is being repaired. It should be back in a few weeks, ready for more skits and other fun videos. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell for future video notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.